So yeah, I mean, with the advent of immune checkpoint blockade, moving to the front line, either in combination with ipilimumab or in combination with uh, VEGF TKI with excitinib approved with either pembrolizumab or valumab in this space, the question becomes, you know, unfortunately for those patients who don't respond or develop progressives in the future, what is the best option? You know, when we look back at the data, nibolumab and cabozantinib have been, both been shown to improve oral survival when compared to everolimus, although obviously nibolumab is another checkpoint inhibitor. And if you look at cabozantinib, a minority of the patients actually have received um, checkpoint inhibition. So there's been a series of retrospective analysis trying to answer these um, very questions. And what they've shown is that, you know, in those patients who get immune checkpoint blockade alone, nearly all of the TKIs have activity to an extent with different toxicity profiles. We specifically looked at cabozantinib in this space um, after immune checkpoint blockade or with VEGF, and we saw actually very comparable response rates as compared to what was seen in Meteor. So I think at the end of the day, I think, you know, patients who progress immune checkpoint blockade alone, a TKI is reasonable with cabozantinib encouraging, as well as based on the phase two data, lumbatinib and everolimus.